probably Brock's last victory in 87. I was probably only five years of age. Uh, I, I've got a very vivid memory of the, um, the DJR Sierras, which came in in about 88. And, um, you know, I, I wasn't quite around for the, the Tirana days and, and um, you know, the Falcon days with Moffat and Bond. But, uh, yeah, certainly the, the late 80s of the Sierras and um, into the early 90s of the, the big bangers that came in. And uh, Jimmy Richards in 92, that rained out race. Um, controversial red flag and that magical podium moment, I think those things all stand out as a young kid. Believe it or not, even with you know my family's history and my, my grandfather Lex, you know, winning the Australian Grand Prix here back in the late 50s, um, you know, I was at so many um, events in Australia, Australian Grand Prix in Adelaide when my dad was racing, um, but my dad actually never raced here, believe it or not, and he made his debut here as a 60 odd year old two years ago in the historic Formula Fords. Um, so no, I never came here until the year 1998 was actually my brother Alex's first ever race here in Formula Ford. And uh, yeah, it sort of, it hit me, you know, I thought I'd seen it all as a, a young kid, been to a lot of racetracks, but uh, the first time seeing the Mount Panorama sign and, um, you know, seeing the circuit for the first time after thousands and thousands of laps in front of the te telly studying it uh, was amazing. And then my first race here in the year 2000 in a Formula Ford, uh, I'll certainly never forget that first lap heading up Mountain Straight. Unreal, you know, I was just a young, young 17 year old and uh, was having a great year in Formula Ford and uh, it was treacherous conditions. I'll never forget the year 2000 pitting out the back and having to get through um, you know this massive mud uh, car, you know, car park in the car to get to the circuit but we got out and uh, yeah I never, I've got the, the image in my mind now just heading up Mountain Straight having that track to yourself um, for that first time was I was just so excited I mean I was so pumped up as a, a kid in a race car and around this track um, words can't describe it. Uh, it's it's full on, it just gets all your senses going and been coming here for many years now and certainly been, um, you know, in the rain at pressure cooker moments, you know, I remember being on pole in 2009 with, with Garth Tander when we won the race and uh, my first year at the Holden Racing Team, a lot of pressure on us to win and, and getting off, you know, getting the keys to the start. Um, really, really wet conditions was incredibly nerve wracking but um, that's what it's all about is uh, to win this race, you've got to be thrown into the most pressure cooker situations and uh, yeah I mean you, you, you respect the place I mean you've got to take risks you've got to search for the grip um, and you know the smallest mistakes you know in the wet here and you're just you're in the wall so far so um, it's an exciting place and uh, you just got to respect it but um, that's where you, you earn your keep. I'll, uh, I'll tell you um, at the end of this weekend but uh, you know I haven't been a co-driver for many many years here um, and just me being me, you know, I'd certainly feel that responsibility of um, doing my part for, for Cam and Car 6. You know, I've been the lead guy here for many years and, uh, yeah, I don't feel like I've got to be a hero or anything. I know what's required for my role this weekend and, um, you know, it's certainly to just make his life as easy as possible and work with him. And, uh, yeah, I'm nervous having the keys to someone else's car. Um, I, you know, I'll do my best to obviously be fast um, and safe, but um, also look after it and, that's the beauty of Bathurst, trying to do all those three things is uh, a pretty tough compromise. It's a, it's a whirlwind. Um, my first ever supercar podium here was 2007 with Steve Johnson in the 17 um, Dick Johnson racing car. And yeah, we were third, but uh, it was a pressure cooker finish in 2007. If everyone remembers, it was wet and, you know, we led with only a few laps to go. and. Um, it was an amazing um, feeling, you know, just the emotions and the uh, anticipation, the, yeah, just, uh, you know, to get across the line was, was full on and to then see the crowd for the first time. You're third, you're so happy and you just look up to that top step and you just dream of doing that one time and, uh, yeah, to then all of a sudden be there in 2009 with HRT and, and Garth. He sort of said, you know, this will change your life forever, just to soak it in. But no matter what he said, I remember it was all over too quick and I was just in this blur, this sea of people. And, um, and then the second time around in 2016, I really forced myself to, to soak in every second up there because you don't know if you'll ever get that chance again. And um, it's a magical moment, you know, it's a, it's a crazy race. It, you know, a lot, lot's got to go your way to win it. So um, you've just got to soak it in and it's really, 
you know, all the years of you know hard work and it's an amazing job what we have, but it's like the culmination of, of everything. You know, it's it's what we do the sport for is, is that moment and um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's a, it's a cool moment that I'm I'm really fortunate to have achieved. Oh, he's proud, isn't he? Proud dad for sure. Um, yeah, both times he's been under the podium there and I think he's probably had tears in his eyes before me and Dad's yeah, certainly driven every lap of my career with us boys, my brother and I, Alex, um, from you know day one, taking us to a go-kart track and all those years pushing us around and picking us out of gravel traps and uh, you know all the, all the sacrifices he made um, for us to go racing in those early days and uh, yeah, still to this day. Um, yeah, as I said, he rides every session with us and, um, you know, and uh, that's, that's really special that as a family we, we still share that, that common bond. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, hey, he, he just had fun, but every night he was sending us back onboard vision and, um, you know, certainly, you know, watching, watching laps and we were sending him onboard vision, although in different cars. Um, yeah, sharing stories, and it's it's great at this age that you know he he was a very successful racing driver in his own right in the um, you know 80s and and very early 90s, and he effectively stopped racing for my brother and I to pursue a career. So um, you know, 25 years later, he effectively got his butt back in a race car the last five years, and he's still competitive. He does he ha he does have us worried sometimes. He goes hard, and but he's loving it, and we just love seeing that smile on his face. My, my grandfather lost his life uh, racing in 1965, so I never met Lex. My dad was only 11. Um, so that sort of shaped the way that the family, um, you know, progressed. And, um, you know, dad raced and his brother Chris and his brother John. And, and then my grandma remarrying Tony Gaze, who was Australia's first Formula One driver as well. So, you know, I have spent most of my life having died, my grandmother and, and Tony around. and. Uh, Certainly that's, that's really special and having them there with us at many Grand Prix at Albert Park or a lot of our races over the years um, was yeah, obviously very, very special for, for them to see us succeed in some way, shape or form is, is, uh, is really special and, and you know, the family absolutely loves it to this day, they're, they're, uh, they're on board for every race with us. It's a holy grail for so many families and they don't know about a lot of other races but they know about Bathurst and that's, that's our sport as well as a whole. Um, you know, a lot of people don't follow motorsport but they follow Bathurst and uh, it's very cool that families carry the tradition and whether it's a blue flag or a red flag, it's, it's very simple minded but they bleed red or they bleed blue and it's cool that that's still a talking point in, in family homes and we've got to keep that going into the future. Times are changing but I think it's still a very healthy part for, for motorsport and I think motorsport in Australia in particular has, has grown from that tribal rivalry and Bathurst I think is the heart and soul of, of motorsport in general. Be having a great night, um, so we're not there but um, it's, it's exciting to be here in a very strange uh, way, seeing the, the seats, the way they're set up, it certainly feels a little empty here, and, but uh, it's amazing that the event's on. Um, the, the circuit looks literally magical. Walked around this morning and I took it all in. Like it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing place and I think the race is gonna be spectacular. I'm already nervous right here, right now, because there's so many um, you know, contenders and uh, so many strong driver lineups that are going for glory and well, it's been a tough year so this is the last race of the year and everyone's uh, you can see everyone's you know going all in like a game of poker everyone wants this trophy more than ever I know I do I've been dealt a bit of a tough blow this year with my team pulling out after Albert Park this year so yeah we're all we're all pumped and I think the race is going to be insane on Sunday so enjoy it um, you know I know a lot of people wish they were here and they can't be but just watch it on the telly and Look forward to seeing you know all the fans back here next year. So um, yeah, thanks for all the support. Cheers.